Why do people insist on following a human religious leader? We're going to talk about that next on Polygamy, What Love Is This? We received a response from one of our viewers recently that we want to share with you. This is what they said. Mormon prophets and current day leaders create a God to fit their doctrine and as a result to elevate their status and secure power and authority among their church members. God has given his Holy Spirit so that we would know him better know His power and authority over all creation, and humble ourselves as a people in need of a Savior, not mortal prophets. Okay, and this was was read by Karen Bradshaw. She's our co-host today. Thank you, Karen, for coming. And, and we're going to answer this letter uh, with some very interesting information that we hope will help some of our viewers mm -hmm. who have been caught up in Mormonism and left, or polygamy and left, and chosen to follow another religious leader rather than the only one that we should follow, and that's Jesus. So thanks for coming and helping You're welcome. the program. And you know, it is true that we have created gods in our own image, uh, and this is evident in Mormonism, both LDS and the Mormon polygamists. Uh, many of our programs since we began examines the many reasons that we should learn not to trust the arm of flesh, but follow Jesus rather than humans. And there are uncountable numbers of people who hate religion. And I use the word hate mildly here. They despise religion because they've had experiences with religious people who have hurt them and have been hurt deeply. They've been terrorized, abused, sexually molested, lied to, coerced, manipulated, exploited, and even tortured in the name of their God. And survivors of this kind of treatment who have managed to escape uh, their religious group, and I include Mormonism and polygamy in this, they can and they do have long-term consequences, personality disorders, and emotional pain that may take years of therapy sometimes uh, to, before they can be healed from it. And too often the result is not only a hatred of religious ideas, but that hatred is also transferred to God, to Jesus, to the Bible. Uh, they reject and avoid anything that, uh, and everything that hints of religious control and indoctrination. And I can speak for myself on this too. I did for 25 years after I left. Now, and I've met many people, and so have you, many people who have that same idea towards religion yes. after they leave. Now, this is part one of a series that investigates the question, why do people insist on following imperfect human religious leaders when they should follow Jesus Christ, who is perfect? When people choose to follow a man instead of Jesus Christ, who is God, they are like the people of old, as we read in this passage in 1 Samuel. Oh, 1 Samuel 8, 7 says, And the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And that's what happens. People wanted a human king that they could follow like everybody else. And God said that in their desire for a king, they had rejected him. And that's precisely what LDS all Mormon offshoots and Mormon fundamentalists have done. They reject God's leadership by insisting on following a sinful human leader instead. The Bible tells us that every human being since Adam is a sinner. Only Jesus was sinless. With this in mind, why follow a sinner when you should follow the Savior? We have some quotes from the Bible to share with you. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Ecclesiastics 7.20, For there is not a just man on earth who does good and not sin, and does not sin. Romans 3.10, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Okay, so we're all sinners. I mean, basically that's what that says, and we would all, if we're honest, recognize that we all fail. Unless you're a polygamist. <laughs> they still know their <laughs> sin because they give you the fire and brimstone preaching. <laughs> 
God provided a sinless one mm -hmm. for us to follow, but they crucified him. They preferred to follow a sinner and they rejected God's leadership over them. Now, it's true today, all Mormonism claims to follow Jesus, but they reject most of what he taught. Now, we realize that people believe that God sends human prophets to be God's mouthpiece. And throughout the Old Testament, God did that. But in sending humans to speak to other humans on God's behalf, he set up a standard of measurements for us to determine if those men were speaking God's truth. Even though that standard of measurement is ignored by the Mormon religion, that standard remains even today. And we can know now, just like they could know, clear back to Moses' day, if what he was saying was true. And God hasn't kept us in the dark. He has clearly revealed the standard of measurement for truth. And truth doesn't change ever, or it isn't truth. It's either opinion or conjecture or guessing or outright deceit. Now, here is the standard that God has given humanity throughout all the generations to know if what a human is saying is God's truth. Straight from the Bible. Deuteronomy 13, 1 and 3. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign and the wonder comes to pass, of which he has spoken to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you <coughs> to know, sorry, this is, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. Deuteronomy 18, 21 and 22 and if you say in your heart, how shall we know the words, which, the word which the Lord has spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has spoken, has not, not spoken. spoken. Yeah. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. So we have the standard right here, very clear. It, it's not up for reinterpretation. It's very clear what our standard is to measure the truth when people say they're prophets of God, right? Yeah, and, and Joseph Smith he had, failed. Ha, had how many prophecies that came, 52 or something? Uh, he had over 50, 50 prophecies that, that, failed. that failed, yeah. And he said, let's go after other gods because he say, claimed we could become gods. So he fails every test of being a true prophet. Mm. Now, every person who has ever spoken in the context of saying, thus saith the Lord, if what they said did not come from the Lord, it will fail. And, and, and it'll fail the test. Um, and Mormonism began and grew and flourished and remains on that foundation from Joseph Smith until today. Every man who held the office of prophet in Mormonism claims God said something that actually contradicted what has already been revealed in biblical scripture. We can know beyond any doubt if that man is speaking truthfully on God's behalf. And Mormonism loves to have human leaders that they can follow. Let's quote. The president of the church is the mouthpiece of God on earth. As such, he reveals the will of God for us today. Therefore, when we follow the inspired counsel of the prophet, we are following God and obeying his will. So see, they put a mediator between mm -hmm. the people and God, which God removed any mediation um, because Jesus Christ is the only mediator. But they put, one, they put one back saying that a human, a sinful, a sinner, human, is mm -hmm. mediating for God's will. And that's not true. And Jesus Christ is God's mouthpiece and no one else. God can use humans to explain his revealed word and to point people to his word. But in doing that, they are held to very strict guidelines. Do not add to, do not take away from, and do not change what God has already said. But LDS and polygamists are adamant about following a living prophet, a sinful man, to speak to them for God. And God knew that, so he provided one man. He himself became a man, a human being who was without sin, who even died for sinners. And that one man provided by God is the only man God has given authority for humans to follow. He's the one who died for you and paid for your sins. 
It was God on the cross of Jesus Christ. We quote. Acts 20, 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now those verses tell us that that was God on the cross. That was wow. Jesus Christ as God incarnate. And he's not Lucifer's brother. He's God Almighty. Jesus Christ is the man we are to follow and no one else. Can we have human guides and human encouragers? Yes, we can. But we shouldn't follow them. We follow Jesus. Don't even listen to them if, if they say anything that, that can't be confirmed through biblical scripture. In the context of the Deuteronomy passage that we quoted, there's a prophecy about the coming of a particular human prophet, and God said, that's the one we are to listen to. We quote again from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18:15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. Deuteronomy 18, 18, 19, I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I have commanded him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, he will or I will require it of him. Now, this was not fulfilled by Joseph Smith, although they claim uh, that it was. It, it wasn't fulfilled by John Taylor or Eldon Kingston or any FLDS leader or Denver Snuffer or Christopher Namelka or Russell Nelson or anyone else. It was fulfilled by Jesus Christ alone. And Acts chapter 3 verses 19 through 26 confirms that Jesus is that prophet that was promised in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Now we're commanded to listen to him. In fact, we are warned not to listen to those who pretend to be prophets, but aren't. God cares about truth, and He cares about us, and He wants us to be careful not to be deceived by the claims of sinful men who come along claiming to be prophets of God. And other people say, oh, He's telling the truth, follow Him, when they're not. God cares about us, and He wants us to listen to truth. Now, we constantly hear of new offshoots of Mormonism mm -hmm. in this culture. And it seems like new prophets are rising themselves up and, and breaking off from either the LDS church or one of the Mormon fundamentalist polygamy groups claiming that God has called him to be a prophet and start a new group. Usually the only true prophet, they say, and they gather large numbers of people to their movement. The Bible says they gather lots of people who preach what their itching ears want to hear. So every time we hear of a new group, we're going to talk about one in the next couple of shows. Uh, every time we hear of a new group or a new man to follow, we wonder, why do people insist on following a man when they can follow Jesus? And every time a new group is formed, the sinful man who leads them always always comes up with unbiblical teaching mm -hmm. and they usually claim God has given it to them. And usually when this happened, their new revelation contradicts others from the LDS faith who were supposed to be true prophets. But more importantly, they contradict what God himself has said. Now, we're not supposed to follow these men, not a single one of them ever. God has given us Jesus as our only prophet and priest and savior. And in him alone is our salvation. No religion or l religious leader holds that office. Mormonism has over 200, I don't know if you knew this or, or, or are familiar mm. with, there's over 200 breakoffs from the original LDS church. Wow. <laughs> and new ones continue to pop up. And each one claims some kind of exclusive authority. Now, there's a link on the screen at listverse.com, and there's a list uh, on that screen of 10 offshoots from the LDS faith. Probably most of our viewers never heard of them, um, or at least half of them. But my point is, there are only 10 of hundreds of offshoots. Notice the names of um, these offshoots. So there's the Whiteites, started by Lyman White. 
uh, the Gobbyites, how do you say that? Gobbyites. Um, started by William Gobby. S. Gobby. And Hedrick, Hedrickites, started by uh, Grenville, Grenville Hedrick. Gibsonites, started by Walter M. Gibson. Morrisonites, started by Joseph Morris. And the Strangeites, started by James Strain. Strange. Okay. Now notice all of these groups started by men and they're named after the men. Yeah, you should have done the All Redites and the Kingstonites. And <laughs> and that's what they did, though. The polygamy <laughs> groups, uh, you know, when they when they first started, that's what they were called: the Kingston Group, the All Red Group, the yeah. Johnson Group, the yeah. Peterson Group, the yeah. Armston Group. After the man that started them. <laughs> after the man not that after started Jesus. them. And then they say they follow Jesus, but <laughs> yeah. that's not true because they teach what Jesus did not teach. Mm -hmm. um, we should only follow Jesus, period. And there's plenty of things to follow just by reading the New Testament. He is the man to follow. He is the eternal God, the only yeah. true God, the only true God. We read that in 1 John 5. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. Now, this again tells wow. us Jesus Christ is the true God. Okay, there's not That's two amazing. or three or 10 or 20 or 100 I million gods. I never knew gods. that. I never knew that I as didn't a polygamist. Either. I didn't either. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, Jesus wasn't God, not God Almighty, mm -hmm. according to them, but he is according to the Bible. Jesus wasn't a sinner. Jesus never fell into error. Uh, he never fell into temptation. Jesus, as God, is powerful, perfect, kind, just, uh, gentle, compassionate, never fails, never falls, never shows favoritism, doesn't need money, uh, is not of this world, is not a polygamist. He has a kingdom that the gates of hell will not destroy, and the foundation of his throne are righteousness and justice. When you follow someone who has all this and more, why insist on following the arm of flesh? Here's a couple of quotes to think about. The prophet and the presidency, the living prophet and the first presidency, follow them and be blessed, reject them and suffer. Again, it's the Mormons telling the Mormons to follow a man. I heard when, that all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and so did we, only it was the Kingston. It wasn't the, mm -hmm. the leader yeah. of the Mormon group. So each had yeah. different, only true yes. prophets. Uh, actually, rejecting them and following Jesus is better counsel. No one needs a prophet in some religious presidency when you can have Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, one uh, of the three witnesses to the Book of Mormon was David Whitner. And, and when he became in, disenchanted with Joseph Smith, he discovered that much of what Smith was teaching and was doing in secret was hypocritical. He finally got fed up with Joseph Smith's shenanigans and wrote a message to those who followed Smith as a genuine prophet. His message is now in booklet form, which anyone can read for themselves at the link on the screen. And we want to quote a short statement from that message. Joseph, like many of those of old, whom God has chosen, fell into error. And why, would, and why should we want to follow any man into error? Should we put our trust in an arm of flesh? Nay, verily. Okay, there you go. David Whitmer. That's what David Whitmer said. Okay, and he once believed Joseph Smith and followed him, but he saw what he was doing, and so he renounced him. And then the leaders of all the Mormon groups continued to preach to their people, come, follow us. You can follow God by following us. That's not true. They made their uh, followers believe that God has appointed him to lead them. They have alleged revelations, don't they? Mm -hmm. They all have alleged revelations. Yeah. They, they claim to hear from God. Yeah, but I find it interesting that most of the prophets from Joseph Smith on didn't have a lot of new revelation. Mm -hmm. And and this Denver snuffer has come up with a lot of new revelation. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that, too, mm -hmm. as we go on with this. And, and that's true. Um, they give a life uh, and advice and life direction in God's name. Right. But it really oh, yeah. comes from themselves. Yeah. But we know they can't be true prophets because the Bible is very clear that John the Baptist was the last prophet. The only person we need to speak for is Jesus. Let's quote. Luke 16, 16. 
the, is that the, what you mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. The law and the prophets were until John. Okay, now, that's what Jesus said. But Mormonism doesn't believe what Jesus said. They, be, they, they no. reject so much <laughs> of what he said. Now, so we know there's no more prophets because Jesus said the law and the prophets ended with John the Baptist. We no longer need mouthpieces for God because we have Jesus, the God man. But Mormonism mm -hmm. doesn't believe what Jesus taught. The polygamists arrange polygamous marriages claiming that God gives direction for those marriages. That's what they did in the Kingston group. God has directed me to marry you or God has directed your daughter to marry so-and-so, you know. Uh, but we know that can't be true because Jesus said monogamy was God's choice for marriage. Hallelujah. And Jesus also said there's no marriage after this life. Yet Mormonism doesn't believe what Jesus said. And there's another movement going on, which began several years ago, and it's been gaining momentum, and we're hearing many comments from followers of this man, and his name is Denver Snuffer. Denver C. Snuffer Jr., I think is his full name. Mm -hmm. And when I first heard of him and that he was gaining followers, I couldn't help but wonder, why do people insist on following a man when they can follow perfection, Jesus Christ? They leave one man-led group, and go into another man-led group. Yeah. We're, we're tackling this topic because several people, not only ex-Mormons, uh, but ex-members of polygamy groups are listening to him and believing what he's teaching and following him. They, they exit one false religion and false prophet just to engage in another one. And we're not supposed to follow man. And we're going to discuss some information about this new religion or this new group created by Denver Snuffer, who was once an active member of the LDS Church. We quote from a website about him. Raised as a Baptist, Mr. Snuffer was converted and baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1973 at the age of 19. He was an active member for 40 years, serving in various lay member positions, including elders quorum president, Sunday school president, bishops counselor, uh, ward mission leader, stake high counselor, and graduate institute instructor. He taught for three years at Brigham Young University, summertime education week, and or on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah. He was excommunicated in September 2013 from the LDS Church on the 40th anniversary of his original baptismal date. His excommunication was due to the publication of a book on LDS history entitled Passing the Heavenly Gift, which the church demanded to be taken out of print as a condition for his continued membership in the organization. Okay, so that's introducing Denver Snuffer and, and his background, what some Mormon got excommunicated. One woman who um, was at a Sunstone uh, Symposium in 216 where he was speaking said this, and I quote, I watched Snuffer present Was There an Original to a standing room only audience at the University of Utah. He was charismatic and spoke in an authentic Mormonism that was lost after the death of Joseph Smith. Don't they lose these Gospels all the time? I mean, really, would God entrust them to these Gospels? They always lose. Um, this was only... This, That's a good point. This loss only escalated and amounted to the current state of apostasy in the LDS Church. The goal of his movement, the remnant, is to recapture an authentic Mormonism marked by spiritual experience and individual encounter with God that doesn't necessitate a temporal intermediator, intermediate excuse me, which is to say a priesthood or any individual with a special relationship to God. Okay, now, that might sound good. Okay, he's saying, don't follow man, follow God. That's what he's saying there. That's what he's saying, but... But that's not what, that's he, not what means. he means. <laughs> <laughs> the goal yeah. of Snuffer's new religious movement is to let individuals know that there's no need for a mediator for him or her to have individual spiritual experiences. No one needs a human to follow, he says. Now, this sounds a lot like what we've been saying. Why follow a human when we should be following Jesus? Yet Snuffer himself has many followers... He has written many volumes of religious ideas on what he calls revelation. So what's the difference? Or is there any? We, but there is actually a big difference because every spiritual experience 
every single alleged revelation must be based on truth. It cannot, if it's genuine, it cannot contradict or add new information to what God has already revealed. Jesus Christ is the truth. If it disagrees with his teaching, it needs to be rejected. God's measure for us to know false prophets is in the Bible and only in the Bible. Isaiah 8.20 warns us that if anybody speaks not according to the word, this word, mm -hmm. there's no light in them. Um, but just like Warren Jeffs did, Denver Snuffer has written volumes of books. I don't know how many, eight, seven, eight, nine, yeah, uh, including what he calls new revelation from God. And next time we're going to talk about some of this revelation. But too often, uh, break off groups from the LDS faith begin by a man who's been receiving new revelation. And Snuffer, like so many of them, uh, claims that all other factions of Mormonism are apostates. Exactly what Joseph Smith claimed. In that statement, he includes the LDS Church and Mormon polygamy group organizations. The same apostate statement Joseph Smith made, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? No. Our time is up for this part of our discussion, but watch next time as we tackle part two of our look at Denver Snuffer and his new religion. And we find it interesting. Of course, like everything, we can't cover all the details. But hopefully we'll give enough information that maybe some of his followers or people who might be thinking about joining his group will stop and think and, and decide to just take Jesus instead of somebody else. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and, and you and I both know people who, who are following him. Who, who are just hanging on to his every word, read his volumes and all of that. And so hopefully we'll reach some of them too. Thanks, yeah, Karen. Thanks. So. You're welcome. Through the ages, false prophets have raised themselves up claiming to speak for God. But all through the Bible, God warns us to watch out for the false prophets, and he gives us perfect ways to test to see if what they say is truly from God. Instead of paying attention to these tests, they are ignored and most often replaced with fuzzy feelings. Authentic Christianity believes and teaches only from the Bible and that Jesus alone is who we should follow. Snuffer has said that people should follow Jesus, not mere men, and that's true. But then he comes up with volumes of new revelation and rewritten history history, by the way, and people are following him thinking they're following Jesus, but they're not because Hebrews tells us there is no more new revelation. It really is finished.